I, don't, I haven't put up a lot of words and stuff, and I haven't really asked for that. I need some money. How much? Hmm. Like a lot. How much is a lot? Like, like several hundred gold pieces. I mean, right. some of the, some of that's gonna like as, as the, the the wards take a lot of diamond dust and stuff, which is gonna cost you know, per ward is is gonna be a lot. And then I also have a, a project I'm working on that, that requires some ex more expenses. I just I, I've been adventuring you through for three years and I haven't asked for any money yet. No, it's uh, fine. I, no, it's, it's I, uh, it feels you weird. guys take a walk down to the vault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you open it up and it is like astonishingly <laughs> empty. It's a huge vault and there's what? How much? How much money is in uh, there? Oh. Um, 412 platinum pieces, 998 gold pieces, 374 silver pieces, and four copper. Oh uh, no, not or it's not even copper. that big. It's like seriously, like think about it. Uh, think about it. Four dollars worth of pennies, <laughs> 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 but but in platinum. So there's like maybe a small pile of coins about this big in the middle of this like room sized vault. Oh. Yeah, I guess Marrington wouldn't have any other money than what we just brought back with us, huh? Yes. Okay. You know, I can wait. Uh, or can you set up just a, maybe one or two <laughs> wards? Uh, sure. I'll also start building bridges for money or something. <laughs> <laughs> or you could, or you could uh, look for some maybe some treasure in the area. Yeah, or look for treasure in the area. That disembodied voice is right. <laughs> Welcome to Threshold, Heroes of the Feigned Coast. Let's see what players we have with us today. Hi, my name is Pamela, and I am playing Christine Nostromo, a level 7 human fighter, a level 1 paladin. Hey, I'm Kevin, and I am playing Vel, a level 8 elf wizard, um, who is doing things. Hello, I am playing Ka Kuruka. I am a level 6 rogue, and I am one of the birdmen from the east. Hi, my name is Brian. Uh, I am playing a level seven druid. <gasps> Halfling druid. Uh, my name is Kapukena Pwaku. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm very excited. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's figure out what we're doing today. A uh, little bit of explanation on what we're doing. The Heroes of the Bang Coast is going to be a series of sort of adventures that are going to take place in and around Marenton um, to kind of explore the area a little bit further. Uh, let's see what's going on today, Christine. Um, what is, where are you going? Uh, today we're going to Cromer to investigate the Nexus Gate. Okay. Um, apparently it's still acting up. Um, as well as to, um, I guess, to meet the mayor and um, <sighs> dispel some rumors. Great. Uh, Vel, what is a Nexus Gate? Oh, right. Uh, so back when the elves had a big sort of, at least this area spanning empire, um, they had a big Nexus, uh, a big collection of portals that pretty much led everywhere in the Empire. So it's like a magical subway system. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, no. I don't know. Kinda, I guess. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if you will recall, uh, Darius led you guys out of this Nexus portal the last time you were here in Cromer. Yes. Uh, and apparently... I, Vel thought it was turned off, but he's been hearing a lot of rumors about how it's still opening and causing problems and stuff. Uh, and Vel has also been doing some research. Yes. Uh, tell us uh, about that a little bit. Yeah, there's been a lot of, uh, since his return to Marenton especially, lots of experimentation on uh, transplanar things and poss possible ways to retrieve Rasper if Rasper is still alive. And uh, also just to combat extraplanar threats that now that devil armies are invading and stuff. Mm. Um, to that end, he's been banishing himself repeatedly and stuff like that. Um, All right. Yeah. Um, Kakuruka, uh, how did you, how did a bird person from the east end up here on the Fane Coast? 
I was part of the strike team mm. sent after uh, Clarion Johns in Crescent Crest. Um, okay. And I uh, deserted because I've been hearing about all sorts of lunar magic activity going on over here. And that's the... Why is that important to you? To the bird people, the Thethesians, that uh, the lunar god is sort of like their main jam. Okay, so, so they're really interested yeah. that st this stuff is going on. We, we've been told that that's like all ours, all of our stuff. And I, uh, as Vel put it uh, last episode, I am a truth seeker looking for the answers. Right. Um... Kapukana Puaku. Kapukana Puaku. Kapukana! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was out uh, on the road. I'm, I was, I'm going between different worship spots along the coast because I'm a, I'm a coastal druid. Mm. Um, and I ran to these fine folk and they told me about their problem and me being a uh, generally happy disposition, want to help people. I decided to uh, to move forward with them to see if I could help them. Also, I could, uh, uh, anything that unite the coast, that could be good, right. good for me and my tribe. Excellent. Yeah. We have tribal halflings. Who knew? There's a few. Yeah. There's at least one. Uh, so uh, you guys have arrived uh, in the city of Cromer. Um, it's a small little city. Um, maybe. Um, it's maybe a half, uh, well, I guess it's like a mile from the coast, and then another mile in, inland is where the actual rocks are. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have camped, uh, Christine and Bell, at least, you have camped there a couple mm -hmm. of times. Okay, so they're actually on the opposite side of the town from the coast. Yes. I had been picturing it the opposite way. Interesting. Yeah, they're further in there. Okay. Um, and uh, they sit kind of on, a, they, they kind of have a Stonehenge-y vibe. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is that where you guys are headed first, or are you going to head into town? Um, uh, I'd like to head to town first. Great. I'd like to head there first. Go ahead. Yay! Yeah, I don't like no, I don't like no big city there, brother. I'm a big city man. I don't like the cities. All right. Is it town? Is it? No, no big cities, brother. <laughs> uh, a big city for him is uh, more than... 40 <laughs> people. <laughs> um, so... I'll, I'll look. I'll look to you, uh, lady of the. Uh, what's what's the decision? I'm gonna. I'm heading into town. You guys can go off to the rocks, but I think it's right. important. All right, great. Uh, so we're we're in town, um, and uh, where are you heading in town? I'm heading um, to uh, Nathan. Is that how you say his name? Yes, uh, that's his. That's his first name, Nathan Cromerson, mm -hmm. the um, the Lord uh, appointed Lord Mayor of Cromerson of mm -hmm. Cromer. Uh, you head to, um, you, uh, give me a, you ask around town, uh, you don't need to give me any check for this, uh, you ask around town and, um, determine that his, like, city hall, his sort of mayor's, uh, lordship, it, it's not, a, not so much a tower as it is, like, a small fort, uh, in the center of town, um, low stone walls, it's certainly not a castle, but it could provide some, some, it could be defended if need be, um, and you can see their banners um, flying on the flags. Uh, their their flag is a um, it's a red background with then one of the Cromer rocks uh, drawn on it. It's a, like a little obelisk with a hole in the top. One of the ones that makes the whistling sound. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, other than that, it's like a it's a brown it's a brown stone from the uh, from the Adler Mountains. Uh, that make this this little tower. There's a couple of guards at the gate. Uh, they salute you when you approach, and uh, they send you right in to uh, meet Nathan Cromerson, who is a uh, he's an older gentleman. He has um, he is old enough to have fought in the War of the Woods, so he's like oh pushing. He's like like 80 years old, uh, if if not a little older. He's he's very old, but he still looks like he's in good shape. He certainly couldn't fight or swing a sword. Um, but he still has his wits about him. He has um, a tight white beard, uh, and his head is totally shaved. Um, and he wears, of course, to, to meet you. Um, he doesn't keep you waiting long, but it, he takes some time to put on his uh, his finest dress, which is a uh, which is red and uh, red and brown armor. With um, and but he doesn't carry any weapons, uh, and he has a cape. He's a cape. Um, and he uh, approaches you and he says, My lady, uh, to what do I owe this honor? 
Hermerson, I had heard um, I'd heard some rumors that you were having trouble with uh, the rocks in the Nexus game. Mm. Yes, uh, unfortunately the rumors are true. The uh, the Nexus Gate, I don't know what's happened in recent years. I, uh, Nexus Gate, is that the word for it? That's what... Um, yeah, I'm going to say that we came with Christine. Just, okay. Uh, Make my life easy. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, and you know, sure, we'll go into town. Uh, yes, uh, it's, it's an old... Elven thing. What's, what's going on with it? Um, well, every so often, um, every so often it will open up and there'll be a, it'll be like looking into, um, like looking through a mirror or a window, but beyond that window are, uh, are strange landscapes. Some of them, um, some of them look like our own. Some of them are significantly darker or, uh, more colorful. Um, uh, some, once it opened to a, uh, a lake of fire, That's um, not good. one time it opened to a, uh, an endless field and we could see down, um, uh, down into the pits of hell. It doesn't happen very it's often. Really not good. <laughs> no. Um, so, uh, as you can as you can tell, it's making some of the town people nervous, which is why there's such a big camp out there right now. Christine, I think I might have broken the Nexus portal. What kind of camp? Um, I'm sure you've maybe heard of him. His uh, his com his civilian army, Tonbert Cooper. I had heard rumors. In the in the last months. Uh, He's been coming down the coast. He came into Cromer. Uh, he uh, has apparently started a crusade to uh, charge. He, he wants. You'll have to talk to him specifically, but his charge is against devils um, as sort of a revenge. He, he wants to avenge the our world by uh, by attacking theirs or something to that effect. Um, and I think he thinks that the Cromer. The Cromer Gate and the Cromer Rocks could have some kind of secret hmm. involved in that. Um, I think I heard them earlier this week, yeah, that they were made big noise ar around my village and they drank hmm. all the water. Hmm. hmm. Yes, uh, and uh, where where's your your village is close to here? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's up north there. I don't know what what you people call it, what, what, what your, your little big, big monstrosity uh, villages you call them, but I live near north of here, I suppose you call it. I, I see, I understand. Um, and it's you. The, there was a loud sound and your water disappeared? Yeah, the, the, the big... All the people come. All your, what, your, your, your big people. Oh, Thank oh, yes. To crusade. Yeah. yeah, the crusade come down. They come and they. Thank you. <laughs> they, come, they come and they use they use a, a holy pond for for washing their clothes. Well, uh, I apologize. I can assure you that um, the people of Cromer try to maintain a good relationship with the with the local people. Um, so if um, if if there's anything we can do to make amends. Please, uh, please let me know at another time. Oh, no worries. You got it. Okay. Um, yes, so um, if if the, the rocks are all you need, uh, my lady, then um, you can, you have you have free free reign of this town and of the area. Thank uh, you. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. Of course, Cramerson. I, I appreciate your help in this. He like he and then he like looks at the at Ka, the bird person, and his eyes are like <laughs> No, and he says, Is this one He's with me. You have nothing to worry about. Yes, yes, my lady. Alright. Um I guess I do like exit formalities or whatever if there is one. <laughs> I don't know. Commence exit formality. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he he said uh, like he says if, if there's like, nothing if there's nothing change. else. Um, then I'll then um, I'll I'll leave you. Um, I have a, some matters to attend to. Excellent. Um, uh, again, thank you very much for the troops that you've stationed here. You're welcome. Uh, the Marrington Rangers have done a, a good job for when the portal opens for keeping the townspeople under control. Uh, he says thank you very much and have a fine day. And he kind of he he bows and he uh, he kisses your hand, which I think is a thing. And I guess you do that against kings. Do you do that with ladies? Mm -hmm. I don't you know bow. your weird human customs, whatever. I think man. you bow. I think kissing is only for the king. Okay, that sounds about right. Uh, so he 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 bows and he puts his puts his hand on his heart and he 
uh, he says thank you and he, he turns very gruffly and uh, he you can see that his legs uh, he has like some braces on them um, and he kind of clanks away like as he walks. Is that anything like is that just an old people thing or is that like an unusual I, I think it's a I think it is a war wound slash old okay. people thing. Okay. Mm. It's, a, it's something like she would have known about him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah that's not a surprise. Cool. Great. Okay. Um, thank you very much my friend. It's good to see you. Thank you very much for your information. Uh, may Posai give a blessing on your house, and I spit on the ground. Christine. <laughs> he I, like he he looks at this and, uh, and he says, "Thank you. Uh, your custom honors me." Okay. Um, I guess we're gonna head to Christine. Kromer. Yes. It sounds like the rocks are opening to random planes of existence. I think I might have done that. <laughs> okay, explain to me how. So when we went north through the next gate here, mm-hmm. I may have just pulled out the power source of the gate from the other side because I wanted the transmitter stone back. Okay. Not sure if that would have broken it or not, but you know, it wasn't open to opening to random plans before. Now it is. We should go there. Yep. Yes. Yes. Rock. <laughs> what, what, what did he, what did promise? <laughs> okay. You know about planes of existence. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, not, that was easier not, than I thought. Not an idiot. <laughs> Just not sure of your ways. Idiot. Hmm. <laughs> All right, there's a big portal. Let's just go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, you um, you arrive at the uh, you arrive at the uh, the Chroma rocks. Uh, the I should mention that the the rocks themselves are not necessarily elven in make. They actually mm. look much much older than oh. that. They predate the elves in pretty much uh, any record of this. Of this place, they were here when the 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 elves have written about him being there. Uh, the humans have written about him being there. The bullywugs have written about him being there. So they're kind of mysterious. Um, they're about two miles from the coast, and um, yeah, there uh, is a sort of a larger ring on the outside with then some like bizarre croppings up in the center. Uh, rumor has it that at certain times of the year, the shadows cast by the rocks make pictures in the. Uh, but what times of year those are and what the pictures are supposed to be um, reports very wildly. Mm. Uh, as you approach the rocks, you notice that they are totally covered and infested with peasants. <laughs> I was watching Pamela's face as I said covered and infested, and she was like, oh with goodness. peasants. Oh. Oh. You did that on purpose. Yeah. Pe- peasants as in like... Like people. Like people? Disgusting. Yeah. Peasants. I think you said pheasants for... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and no. Oh, um, very but uh, Tonbert Cooper is going to have a pheasant on his shield. Uh, so um, you you look at the rocks and you can see that there is litter and camp set up and uh, people like stringing clothes and people building fires and people like hanging out on the rocks. Uh, the whole area is just filled with the camp of these lay people uh, with whatever kinds of arms and armor they can gather. They're, they're essentially a crusade. They are moving down the coast, uh, and you can see that there's a big tent in the center that looks fairly nice. Uh, it has a pheasant banner flying at the top, um, which is not a house you recognize, but you will soon come to know uh, is the chosen sigil of Tonbert Cooper. It is a green pheasant on a, uh, bound, a brown background. Okay. I head towards uh, the big extravagant tent. Uh, As you, uh, Kapu is pissed because he <laughs> does not like these people messing up his beautiful natural... Uh, his beautiful natural and natural rock formation. But it's, it's part of nature. It's been there forever. It might as well have been nature. Right? So like, he does not like these, these people jamming around the, that place. So he's okay. pissed. Um, as you start to uh, as you start to approach, uh, a guy comes up to you and he says, "Hey, hey, are you uh, are you here to join? Can I sign you up?" No. Looks like you're all no. You're but you're uh, you're all dressed for battle. 
Hey, you've come, uh, you've come to, to join the Dawn Blade, right? Don't know what that is, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, he, he pushed past him and he fades back into the NPC yeah, like, crowd. Yeah, push like, <laughs> we don't want any bread, go away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Wait, uh, I wouldn't say we don't want any bread, but anyway. I guess we keep walking. Uh, uh, you, uh, you keep walking and you... Um, you make it to the the big tent. Um, there's a couple of guards posted outside. Um, you could take them uh, <laughs> easy, um, but uh, they you know have they have like somewhat nicer of uh, materials. Looks like freshly bought breastplates, uh, spears with new swords at their side. Any sigil on the breastplate? Uh, yes, the sigil on the breastplate um, is brand new. You can see that it is a. Um, I'll draw it. It looks like this. Um, it is a sun down at the bottom. One of the rays of the sun, the sun itself sort of like forms a, uh, forms a sword. It's <laughs> okay. This is the sigil. It's not a house sigil. No. Okay. Ooh, that's neato. Off the top of my head. <laughs> That's why you're there. Not <laughs> um, <laughs> so that is the that is a sigil that is uh, on the breastplate. Uh, you don't recognize it. It looks a bit more sword like than than that. But um, uh, the the guards kind of eye you warily as they come up. One of them says, "Hey, get out of here!" No, no, you get out of here. This. Oh, man. <laughs> You show us a good accent. <laughs> no, you get out of here. You came here in this land. This is our land. You get out of here now. Um, he kind of like puts a, puts his hand kind of on the sword, and he says, "All right, puny little puny little kid, is this your kid?" Does he recognize the giant symbol on my breastplate? <laughs> Um, the one next, to, the, the guy next to him does. He doesn't, and um, the okay. the guy next to him. Um, if this impacts you a little. I did bring the staff too, which is fairly ostentatious. Yes, so. and is uh, fairly intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the guy who's currently uh, berating um, Puaku is a serious idiot. <laughs> and um, is kind of oblivious. So he, as he berates the child, um, the guy next to him. Oh, no, don't call me ch- you he's ca- I'm sorry. I was in his head headspace yeah. for a second. <laughs> I was in his headspace as I was transitioning to the guy over. Okay. As he berates Puaku, I'm very sorry. Um, as he berates <laughs> Puaku. Uh, Let's <laughs> move on. <laughs> uh, as um, as he berates Puaku, the guy next to him says. Um, excuse me, uh, the, Miss uh, Lady Demarin. Yes. What business do you have here? I am here to see Cooper. The guy, other guy, is shut up. And he's like, "What?" Oh, and then he like kind of, kind of stands up. You can tell that he's like unwilling to back down. Um, yeah. hmm. We should probably try and clear these people out before the portal opens to the arrow dimension or something and kills everyone. Just saying. Okay. Good to know. Yes, we need to get people yeah, I just, out. I'm no expert on this, but I'm, I'm just the magic guy over here. But, you know. uh, he says, what bu- what business do you have with him? He is acting as a self-proclaimed general in my lands and forming an army without my knowledge. Yes. Well, unfortunately, while this may be your land... Cooper works for a higher calling now. He's the captain of Don's Blade. And we're going to find the devil scourge and we're going to rout it out of hell once and for all. Just because he honors a god doesn't mean he shouldn't have manners. He has no response to that. And he just kind of bites his tongue. And um, the uh, the stupid idiot guy <laughs> says, uh, I'm going to go check. Uh, I'll see if he's available. And he goes inside the tent and the other guy just stands there kind of silently kind of looking he's a little taller taller than you christine um but not as tall as bell so he like <laughs> like is like looking up and down you guys are actually kind of a funny height pattern i just realized bell yeah. is tall christine is like human sized uh Kakuru is like bird people are uh he's no, a tall he's bird person also a tall bird but person. It's right, you're like five six. Yeah. Uh, and then half lane. So you guys are kind of a funny height pattern. Uh, 
So, Don's Blademan. Any portals Eat. opening up around here lately? Not yet, but when the portal to hell opens, we will storm in with our holy fire and we will rout out all the devils inside. Yeah. So you worship you, the Don? What do you? No, we don't worship any god. What are you? Uh, what are you gonna do in the portal to? I don't know. Pandemonium opens instead. Portal of Pandemonium will not open. You sure about that? Yes. It is our righteous quest. And all the powers of good and heaven and Elysium are on our side. No gods, though. All the good gods are on our side. Hmm. Though we do not worship them. Cool. The other guy <laughs> comes out and he says... Uh, Cooper, we'll see you now. Thank you. I walk in. Uh, they they part part their spears and he kind of snarls at you guys. And once Christine has moved in, the big dumb idiot kind of spits, and the three of you can kind of see it. He spits at the ground and he just throws shade at you guys. I want to I want to go up to the ground where he spat. I'm gonna scoop up the dirt around the spit. I'm gonna put it in my pocket and I go. You're going to regret that later. <laughs> uh, he's like, um, he's like, is terrified for a second, but then he goes, "Don't worry, I'm protected." Oh, okay, little man, you go and you be protected by whatever. Okay. Uh, you you guys walk inside. You can see that the place is done up. Um, it, not uh, rather ostentatiously by someone who uh, is of new money. Mm. Ah, okay. Uh, someone who recently has had wealth. Um, Tonbert Cooper um, is a fair man. Um, you can see he is wearing his armor. Um, he the best word to describe him is paladin like. Mm. He is um, he's clearly a paladin. He's he's blonde, blue eyed. Um, Shining gold armor with that same sigil put on it. Um, it's a very nice piece of, um, of full plate armor. Looks okay. very expensive. Uh, the tent is done up. It looks like a war room tent. Um, it's nicely done up. You can see that there's a small diagram of the rocks, which then ends in a portal with like a sort of question mark, question like a place where they're going to draw the map when they know where they're going into, what that looks like. Uh, Good plan. But there are some some basic things that are sketched out, and you can see that there, uh, Bell, of particular interest to mm -hmm. you, there's some books open that um, describe several um, that dis uh, are noted works of people who have either been or have dreamt of of hell, like people writing their descriptions, like oh. whatever. So he's trying to like do some historical research. Mm. Uh, how many people mm -hmm. are in the tent? Um, it is uh, Cooper and then two two sort of lieutenants. Um, one of them looks like a soldier. One of them looks a bit more um, a bit more magicy, uh, but in a priestly way. Okay. Um, the the priest guy wears sort of simple simple robes um, that are um, that are white or kind of trying to be white. They're more like a cloth, like a off white. And he says, um, Lady Damarin, I was uh, surprised to hear you. I did not think that you would join our cause. However, I am uh, willing, certainly, to accept you here in our tent. What makes you think I'm joining your cause? Well, because from what I've heard, you are a noble and good lady. And I've also heard that you helped a great deal in defeating the evil Kumbakarna up during the siege of Olengrad, so I know that you must hate devils as much as I do. Hate is a very strong word, Cooper. You don't hate devils? I kinda hate devils. Hi. He doesn't he he pays he pays Bell no mind. Um mm. I'm gonna deflate slightly and then just start like reading whatever book he has open. On. <laughs> as the uh, as your staff drips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. 
Well, I do have a strong dislike of the devils. I don't think that storming into their plane and trying to murder all of them is a smart idea. It is not murder when it is devils. It's only mercy. One day... It from being a bad idea. <laughs> do you know how uh, killing devils on their own plane works? Do they die by the sword? You have more experience than I do. Bell, you want to explain this to him? Uh, that's just my click. Death, what? It seems you have about as good of an idea as I do. And while I understand you're the lady here, I would ask you to refrain from insulting me within my own tent. Why did you start an army on my land without first, I don't know, maybe talking to me? It was in Xerothane. I was in Xerothane when the suddenly devils sprang out of nowhere in the town. Mm -hmm. There were maybe 16 of them. They were burning everything. I was but a simple cooper at that time, like my father. They killed my father and I picked up his hammer. And I was able, by the grace of goodness, to kill all of those devils that day. Mm -hmm. By yourself. With some help from the town people, but yes. Yeah. All right. I look over, I'm looking over Bell's <laughs> shoulder as he looks at stuff in the book, and I just start pointing at stuff, like yeah. expecting him <laughs> to, like... Oh, that's a pentagram. It's a penta... <laughs> yeah, that's another pentagram. There's a lot of those in hell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this one? And this one? <laughs> it, it sounds like you're trying to get him to read words out loud. No, I'm just oh, trying, oh. I'm trying to <laughs> He's learn. trying to I have no idea. What oh, you're just is. trying to learn. He's trying okay. to help. Or learn. <laughs> so then why did you then start creating an army? I started having dreams. Mm -hmm. I started having dreams of an evil down below this site. Which I can only assume is meant to mean the gates of hell. The only evil here, my friend, is the evil that you and your army is bringing forth upon the, the spirit and the area of Posai. Everyone kind of, like like tenses up when they hear you say the word evil and he like he he looks at you with uh, fire in his in his blue eyes and uh, he says what did you just call me i said you and your people are getting too much you're ruining the area and that my friend in the in the eyes of posai is evil small price to pay to bring balance back to the universe. You are upsetting the balance. There is no balance. You ruin. If you're not, if you're not here to join me, then it sounds like we're done here. I'm. I, uh, I put my hand <laughs> on his shoulder, and look down at him, and I, uh, I in in his voice, I say, "Idiot!" <laughs> and, I look, and I look to Tom Burton and in an old man's voice, and I'm like, "I'm so sorry, sir." <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean any harm. I don't want to hurt anyone. I just want all of your people to leave and keep. And we'll keep leave the, when the we'll leave when the portal opens. Can you promise me that your people <laughs> will keep the area clean and in and in the same state that you came here in? <laughs> this is like this environmentalist <laughs> message <laughs> is like going way over his <laughs> head, and, and he he says like. He, Y yes, yes, I'll, I, I'll, I will do my best. These are all volunteers, so I don't have direct command over them, but I can promise that I will give a message out to all of them to clean up their campsites. Thank you, that's all I care about, that's all I care about. So you'll be disbanded as soon as you enter into the gates of hell? Well, no, that is when the crusade will begin, but when it is finished, yes, we will be disbanded. So your plan is to march through all of hell? Yes, and down to, down to Asmodeus himself. That's ambitious. Yes, but it is my destiny. I've been chosen for it. What were your dreams and visions like? There was a... It was down deep below down below the rocks. I would dream of the rocks and going below them. And below would be 
Now this is where the dreams are strange because it was not fire that I saw down there, but cold and water. Hmm. Was there any particular place that your dreams or visions took you to get down deep into the depths of hell? It led me below the rocks to the, and as I got further down through these corridors, I saw idols of this devil with uh, four arms and three red eyes. Was it winged? No. <laughs> All right, this has been a treat. Do you mind if I look around the rocks? I'm gonna Please, the camp, camp is nothing, but I would ask that you uh, just provide me and my men the respect that we deserve. Of course. As long as we receive the same. I have been nothing but courteous. You're also planning on storming hell with a camp that you're calling nothing, which is interesting to me. I'm gonna go. We're small <laughs> now, but people will rally to us. You'll see. I've You'll seen, see. I have seen. I've seen already. Thank you, Cooper, for your time. He I'll goes. Leave. He goes back to his work, and the uh, guys on the outside like glare at you as you walk away. I smile back at them. I'm gonna head to the rocks. Great. So, uh, as, as we're walking there, um, so it sounds uh, more like there's actually perhaps tunnels or something underneath and not hell. Sure, if you want to go off of the dreams of that crazy person. Uh, do you have a better idea? Yeah, I'm going to look at where the portal opens and try and keep it closed. All right. Um, I'm going to go to around where I remember the portal opener. Okay, uh, it's an archway uh, okay. with a slot at the top that um, those, looks like it wasn't designed as an excess gate, but it could be to hold the planar energy or whatnot. Mm -hmm. How's the feeling? Ethereal, ethereal, ozone, ozone, okay. blah, blah, blah. How's the feeling uh, around the, the gate? Give me a perception check. Ooh, first check of the character. That's going to be a, a 17. Ooh. And it's a good one. Um, you you get a vi um, you get kind of a uh, an uneasy feeling, actually. You um, you pick it up first and strongest, um, but there's definitely something about all these rocks that gives you a an uneasy feeling, a profane feeling. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Can I? I'm gonna use a new power. Can I use my divine sense? Oh, mm. uh, to sense for evil, um, and yeah. So I guess first sense for evil. Um, you you do so. You kind of you send out your senses, and you you get a, the same kind of profane, uneasy okay. sense, okay. but you don't necessarily detect any evil entities in the so okay. um, Do I know that's... if it's celestial, fiend, or undead? No, no, it's not that strong. I just investigate the just as... itself. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Val, would you like to as well? Uh, yes. Um, Investigate. While everybody else is poking around, I'm going to do a quick detect magic ritual. Um, draw some circles that? in the ground with the staff, smear some weird stuff across my eyes, and let's look for some magic. But if I don't feel good about this. This does not feel good in this area. Can I follow the sense of uneasiness? No, it's and it's, it's just like a general. Okay, hold on, hold on, one at a time, one at a time, one at a okay. time. We've got a lot of investigating. Um, okay, let's start with uh, let's start with the easy ones. Vel, uh, as you are detecting magic, um, you detect some. Um, you detect a couple of like minor magic items huh. that are scattered amongst these people, like something that maybe is a family heirloom that they right. think brings them luck that they don't realize really does bring them luck. <laughs> um, that they have brought with them here on their pilgrimage. Um, you um, are sort of detecting the stones themselves actually aren't uh, don't seem to be magical um, and the uh, the center the center portal seems to be fairly dormant hmm. not even like it doesn't even seem like it's been open recently not recently okay it's uh, kind of fairly sporadic not getting a lot here actually that's strange Uh, next, 
Kakaru, you're investigating the um, the rocks. What did you get on your investigate? Uh, Eleven. <clears throat> okay. Um, you're investigating around. You don't see anything too interesting of note. Um, Christine, your sort of sense, your divine sense doesn't actually like say, okay, here's something that you can focus on. You just get an uneasy feeling, but you get it after you start kind of feeling out for it. Okay. Uh, were you doing any kind of investigating? Uh, Kapukena. Ka- <laughs> Kapu. Kapu. Ka- oh, Kapukena. Hawaku. Oh, yeah. So which one's your first name? Kapukena. Kapukena. Okay. <laughs> Everyone writes down Kapu. I wrote it down. I was just like, which one do I, like, like, which one's the first name? Right. Uh, were you doing any kind of investigating? Okay. So you're just getting your feeling of uneasiness. Great. Um, uh, Vel, as you're detecting magic, you do come and you focus mm-hmm. on something that is, um, it's, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm so bad with like what schools some of the stuff should be. Um, it's just a, sort of a universalist. Uh, it's a it's a magical trigger. It's like a magical switch that now that you're detecting mm. it, you it's can probably observation. You can perceive it. Yeah. Yeah. Like like a physical switch. Mm-hmm. Is it on one of the rocks? Yeah. Oh. No, without saying anything, I'm just going to be like, what the heck is that? <laughs> Uh, a rock falls on Cooper King. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go get a sandwich. <laughs> um, no, you flip the switch, and uh, you suddenly, once once you flip it, there's several more uh, similar abjuration switches that are on many of the other rocks Ooh. around you. Okay, I'm getting something now. Well, oh. what'd you do? Do we hear an audible like click or something? Yes, okay. you hear it. It's a deep click, like underneath, uh, underneath the rocks. You hear. A oh. Okay. Christine, you might have been onto something being underneath here. Actually, I there's, I'm getting there's there's switches. There's magical switches on all on the rocks. Okay. I'm gonna start wandering around and just pulling them like at random <laughs> as I walk up to rocks. <laughs> Uh, so you you pull them. I do like the idea that a mad, it's like a switch that only when you are actually detecting for magic you can feel it. It's the um, idea that yeah, if you're aware of it, then it's there. <laughs> you uh, you start flicking them, and you guys can hear some more clicks, and everyone is kind of like whew, freaking out a little bit um, as the um, a big opening sort of like. <laughs> The ground slides, revealing a staircase leading down into darkness beneath the rocks. Oh, maybe his <laughs> dreams were more literal than I thought. Ah, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> it's, uh, um, all right. Uh, and in Tom Burton's voice, I say, "The gates of hell." <laughs> uh, I see. That will, several, I'm sorry, that will always make me laugh. That's always so cool. <laughs> several people, uh, the peasants, um, some of the peasants go, it's here, who are like close by, and like oh. some of them are like, they just get in, they just start rushing down into no, the dungeon. No, 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 stop. <laughs> and some people are like, raise, raise, raise the, raise the banners. And other people are like, no, that's not, that's not, no, those are stairs. We're looking for the portal. And other people are like, no, it's it, it's it. These are the dreams. It's all coming. It's all true. And they're like rushing in the dark. Darkness. They're lighting up torches. They're like hastily putting on their armor. It's like uh, a shit show. Uh, crap, uh, Christine, we should probably get uh, get down and everybody into the tunnel. <laughs> yeah. Great. I'm gonna light one of my torches. Uh, down. Go down to the darkness because yeah, I can't see anything. Yeah, as magic. as we go down, I'm gonna kind of raise the staff, and the moon is going to get brighter, and it's gonna generate oh, some right. light <gasps> as well. All right, Lovely. So this torch, then. All right, can we close the stairs? No, you can't. Okay. Uh, oh, so these you idiots, can't. So these idiots are just gonna keep rushing um, down. Yeah, they're they're yeah. rushing down. So they some of them have beaten you guys as you start to go down yeah. in the darkness. Once they get, once we get down a little ways, how big is the opening? Um, it's only about the size of this table. Um, so it's like single it's, file. It's it's like single file stairs going down. Actually, maybe it's two abreast. It's two abreast it's stairs tight, going down. Tight two abreast, especially if you're wearing okay. a plate. Um, no, it's a little bigger than this table. Is what I'm saying. Oh. Okay. As soon as we're down a little bit, I am going to cast. Shape Earth. Okay. And I'm going to just like, basically, I'm gonna do a quick incantation, tap the staff on the steps a few times, then I'm gonna grab the stairs and go like this, like I'm lifting a blanket, <laughs> and the <laughs> the Earth is gonna come up, and I'm gonna just like close the entrance. <laughs> you <laughs> you close it up, 
uh, as it as it leads you down. There's several of um, several people that had already beat you guys yes. down there. Some peasants. And as you're pulling the stairs, that you can see Tonbart as he like rushes up with his sword drawn, like no, sorry. <laughs> and it's suddenly whoom, quiet and dark. Uh, as you start to now, after that chaos, get accompanied to your, accustomed to your surroundings, there's a uh, sort of musty, wet sound, and you can almost hear like the sound of waves lapping further down. Hmm. Um, some of the people are like, okay, uh, the room that you guys are in, there's three different sections. There's, um, I'll go north, south, east, west, so you guys, there's, uh, the stairs go south, north, uh, northwest and east, there's a different... Uh, a different passage, and you can see some of these guys with torches going, why'd you close that? We're here! It's no matter. Here we go! And uh, they, like, they start charging just, like, straight north no. um, a little ways, and you can hear them splash. They don't get very far. They only get maybe about 20 feet, and you can see them stop. Right. Christine, we should probably huh. stop these idiots from killing themselves. This is not a gate to hell, in case you couldn't tell. Come back! <laughs> Oh, yeah. I start. I start walking towards. I guess they have torches. Yeah. Uh, where they've stopped. Yeah. Um, In uh, Tom Burton's voice, I go, "No!" <laughs> the same way he yelled as the <laughs> game was closed. And they go, "Oh, Tom Burton! We better rally to him!" <laughs> and then they like they come back up the uh, up the thing and they're like confused and they go, "Wait, is, where's Tom Burton?" One of one of the guys, I'll I'll describe him. How He's, many are there? There's three of them. Okay. There's three of them that beat you guys down there. Okay. Um, one of they have that like peasant cap, you know, that comes on their clothes. Yes, the cheesy and, um, leather cap. Yeah. And two of them are just in like simple peasant clothes. One of them has a mace, like a crude mace, and the other one has a board with a nail in it. <laughs> one of the guys is a little bit better. He has uh, he has like an old breastplate that's maybe a family heirloom. Um, and that also looks like a promotional item for uh, some from some blacksmith a hundred years ago. Uh, <laughs> promotional item. Is that like the blacksmith's like? Yeah, yeah. And a gold logo on the back. It's a steel, like like it's steel, steel, like steel plate. Oh, like um, come to, oh, it's a, come it's to a steel. It's yeah, a steel. and then it then it has a uh, then it has a map of bread and um, <laughs> like on it with a star for where. It, <laughs> uh, and I love is, it. That's his family heirloom. And he has like a, a halfway decent uh, longsword um, and a, a wooden helmet that may or may not be a bull. Um, and the, uh, the they go, where's uh, where's where's Tom Burt, the guy with the with the breastplate and the and the bull? I'm gonna call him Bullhead. Give him a name. <laughs> All right, I will. I'll give him a name. Um, his name is um, Lappin. Lappin. His name is Lappin. Good old Lappin. <laughs> Um, in. He is back on the surface. And wait, why is he not down here? He's, this is not the gate to hell. Con oh. Congratulations, you have been elected vanguard. He's marshalling his forces and wants you to wait here and hold the area. Give me a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> As Bell An advantage. Terror. Oh, all right. You're advantage. offering these guys a promotion. <laughs> all right, that's bad. Oh, that's good though. Uh, Nineteen. The other they one's go. A four. <laughs> they, they, they like perk up and like the other two look confused and uh, Lappin <laughs> goes, guys. And he goes, yes, sir. So stay here in front of this entrance and guard it. You got it. Do not move from this spot. Yes, yes, ma'am. Great. The crusades depending on you. Uh, <laughs> I, I look at them and I like say. looking around like. <laughs> Lied. In Tom Burt's voice, I say, <laughs> "Destiny, chosen for you." <laughs> <laughs> he speaks with the voice of Tom Burt, <laughs> and they're they're like they're psyched. They go, "Okay," and then one of the then you can hear him start talking like battle plans. Like, "Okay, so I'm gonna take this whole south flank, and you guys, you each get a passage up that way." <laughs> we should probably investigate further in. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, the crusade is counting on you as I sort of <laughs> edge out. The <laughs> yes, sir. Um, okay, so I guess which direction do we want to head? Um, they stopped north, so I don't know. Maybe that's a shorter passage. So sure. Yeah. Great. North I'd, first. We'll just say I edged <sighs> out. Uh, yeah. 
Excellent. Um, so you head north, and um, it comes to, it looks like it turns, but um, as you get slowly in, you notice that there's more and more water until uh, towards the end of the hallway, right where it's about to turn, you notice that the, the water pretty much like fills up to the ceiling. Mm. This place oh. is flooded. Mm-hmm. It feels like this place, the Posai wants to stop people from going into this place. Uh, give me a perception check. Perception check. Powaku. Ten. Okay, uh, you notice instantly that the uh, the water that's here is actually like a murky blackish. It's been spoiled. Whoa. And this no good water. This is bad, bad water from a uh, Posai. No, does not like this kind of water. Hmm. Well, there's no way we can get past it, so we might want to try a different route. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, was it like what's the? It's just water, but it's just like this cloudy. Yeah, and yeah. Black it's and like gross. it's brackish. Bad like the LA water. River. It's filled. It's. <laughs> it's filled with like a thick mucusy sort of algae. Ugh. Yeah, I'm gonna be like. Yeah, let's go another way. Uh, can, can I go and like, can I like feel the water and like yeah. see what's what's in it? And yeah, it's like oh. a it's like a thick algae. Okay, can I perceive any sort of magical mumbo jumbo with it? Um, I, just, I still have detect magic on. <laughs> yeah, it's not necessarily magical, but it, you you get a feeling that it's wrong. Okay. It's not the way the water's supposed to be here. Okay, yeah, something's influencing it. And and no more time that say we can just go in the water, but but this is no good water, so we should try and go around it. Yeah? Okay. Vel's already halfway back down the hallway. He's like, yeah, good idea. And they're like, we're still guarding, sir. Good. I good. know it's only been two minutes. All right, you're doing great. a great job. I'm going to look this way really quick. All right, we're doing west? Yeah. Um, do you west. head to the west, um, and then it curves north once you get down mm-hmm. a ways. What's your light source? You have uh, staff. I'm staff. Okay, which I is have. light. Yeah, it's got a light, light to the cantrip in it. So uh, This one, you can see it goes a little bit further. Um the water, it looks like it goes into an, a big room, but the water is still full up that so direction. So it's also flooded. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like the rooms are just like full of water? Is that mm-hmm. how? Oh. Okay. okay. The whole, I should say the whole dungeon is on a slant going down. Uh-huh. So the more north you go, the further down so you go. So it's just like gradually slanting uh-huh. the whole way. And so okay. once you get to that sort of room, that's where sort of the shore is. So this whole place is flooded. Okay. okay. So it doesn't just like... The hallway just doesn't end in water. It opens up into a bit of a room, and then the room is... Yes, so this okay. room, you can tell, it looks like the same room that the other passage would have led to, uh, and it's a big, round room. Um, it looks like from the ceiling that it is uh, some kind of audience chamber. Okay. It looks very ancient, and of similar make to the rocks. Hmm. Okay. Bill, do you have any idea what culture this is? Is it Elven? Do I know? It's not Elven. Get, uh, do you have yeah. history? Oh, I yeah, have oh, history. I have lots of history. I have history. Uh, you, you guys can both give me history. Do it at disadvantage. Great. Okie dokie. My history is plus three, so you know. <laughs> um, 21. I rolled an 18 oh. and a 19. Eight. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, Christine, you remember um, from... Can it be a story my grandfather yeah. told me? Yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You remember that your grandfather, who actually is familiar with this area, he told you stories of um, monsters that live under the water that are uh, older than gods and that uh, that enslaved the um, enslaved the, the peoples of the region. Uh, he calls them aboliths. Were they ever described to me? Um, they uh, kind of look like squids, kind of. That's how he always described them. Okay. Um, and they influence the people? Yeah, they have like mind control powers. I rolled poorly. Does any of that resonate with me at all? Um, uh, since I rolled so bad. Okay. Um, I know, I guess, can I, can I, okay. I noticed on one of the walls something that looks like squid like. Sure. Um, and that triggers this memory. You also notice um, that this symbol. Hmm. This okay. symbol is. Um, Three eyes. Hmm. It looks like yeah. three feet, four feet. Well, you did mention a three-eyed demon. Mm-hmm. This, this looks... <sighs> My grandfather used to tell me stories of these things called aboliths. They were squid-like creatures that would live mm-hmm. under the water and would 
influence people um, through mind control, is what he would say. Um, and you think there might be one under the mean, Bromer rock? They were supposed to look like squids. I don't know, that's about as much as I remember. I mean, it's, it's just a fairy tale. It doesn't really mean anything, right? Oh, that's true. That's, right. very, that's very scary. Very, very, very scary. But we can't be having this bad, like, Posa is not happy with these waters. So we have to try and clean them. But I see no way of us, get, of us progressing. Unless. Uh, we still have one more entrance to try. We can check the last one. Although, they might all be flooded. Let's, uh, let's have a look. So we'll walk through the room just like... Uh, this room ends in a portcullis. Oh. This hallway ends in a portcullis. Hmm. To the east? Uh, you can, as you get uh, a little further into it, it has a bad smell. Mm. A very, very old smell. And it looks like you can see beyond the portcullis just by like shining a light through and mm-hmm. looking over that it looks like beyond is a bathroom. Gross. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So don't go east, <laughs> is what I'm hearing. It, it, that's what it says on my chart, bathroom. Okay. Uh, all I, right. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back this way. <laughs> you gotta, I don't have a way to get through the portcullis. I don't think I want to right now anyway. Ah. Uh. It, it, <laughs> it smells bad here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so you uh, you guys go back to the uh, the room you were in before. Yeah. Yes, the previous room, the um, the one to the west with the yes. squid picture. Yeah. Okay. okay. It is apparent to me there's only one solution. We have to go down into water. Yes. Yeah. So let's 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 get down to it, uh, and then I'm going to get out my quarter staff, which is also a didgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to go. Goes, I'll say something in, in uh, halfling that might turn racist if I actually say it, so I'm <laughs> not going to do oh, it. Great. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to go and DJ and go, <laughs> and cast water breathing. Is that everyone? Yep, I can do up to 10 people. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. So we can all breathe underwater for the next 24 hours. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, so do we want to? <laughs> all of you, your guys' um, to your sides, like some some gills oh, come out no. on the side of you guys. <laughs> uh, it feels a little foreign as your your biology is is twisted. Uh, yeah. well, it's like something Darius would do. Gross. No. <laughs> uh, put the didgeridoo like back on my back. Okay. Mm. Okay. Well. So now no. we can go into water. The, the gills open on me. How does something nature magic y feel so unnatural? <laughs> the mutter, mutter, divine magic. Uh, so you guys uh, swim down in there. Um, there's there's some little part of Christine when she was a little girl and always wanted to be a mermaid. Like, some little part of her is like, ee! You're very, you're very <laughs> Yeah. Um, she doesn't show it, but inside she's like, ee! You guys, so you're, uh, as you guys like swim down into the water, everyone's, oh, yeah. everyone's gonna swim, although Val probably very reluctantly. Yep. <laughs> Well, you yeah. have the only light source, so. Yeah. Uh, one, even with the light source in the water, uh, because it's the light makes it so it's you can actually see. You can only see about ten feet in front of you. Okay. I um, imagine like all the murkiness and stuff would be equated to like does. us breathing the us breathing the water. It's like a really, really, really bad smell, like to us, right? Um, yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's a bad. It's a bad. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's a bad smell. Um, the blood from the s- staff kind of trails and like. <laughs> Sorry, cool whoever's behind me. <laughs> Does uh, dark vision let me see any? Um, no, because it's, um, it's a combination of okay. the um, of the murky water and the okay. and the good light. Um, I'm gonna right. pull out. Um, Everybody kept their armor on and everything. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna pull out my sword. It actually, doesn't have any effect in it. I know. I was just curious from a role playing perspective. Yes. Because Christine is in full plate, like tr- trudging through water. Yeah, I imagine mean, I mean, you can't swim. I imagine mean, you're just like you're just like walking, yeah, you're just like walking, walking on, on the bottom. bottom. <laughs> uh, so speaking of swimming, um, just a quick note: um, every hour, because you guys don't have swim speed, every hour you have to make a DC ten con check, or you get exhausted. Okay. Um, so just a thing to keep in mind. 
Okay. What if we're walking on the bottom? Because we. You, it's still kind of swimming. Okay. Yeah. It's still heavy walking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now that you guys are under the water, um, you can kind of, as you shine your light around the room, see that it. This is an audience chamber. Uh, everyone, go ahead and give me a perception check. Um, that symbol repeats a bunch of places. This looks like the three where. Three eyes in the air. Oh. <laughs> Sixteen. Two. Nineteen. Natural one. Two. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You are like, uh, so, uh, uh, Ka, you're just like swimming around. This is the weirdest feeling in the world. But <laughs> there's sure actually, you, you're like, you kind of like it in some ways because you can kind of fly, yeah, which is like something I'm you're. I'm, I'm distracted by the fact that it feels like I'm flying, <laughs> which is something we yeah. wish we could do. <laughs> yeah, you wish you could fly. Um, <clears throat> meanwhile, um, Paku and Vel, you guys both notice at the same time that there is um, some bubbles that are coming out of a door on the far side. A secret door. <laughs> also, the I'm tie on Vel's hair has come undone and his hair is just like... <laughs> and I start doing like my tribes like underwater hand signals that we've developed because we spend a fair amount of time underneath water. Okay. And so we have a, a series of hand uh, sign language to, to talk to each other. I remove my hood so my gills can... Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lower the hood, <laughs> yeah. your bird face revealed. Kapukena now realizes that he's a bird person. <laughs> Just <laughs> now. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a... You both noticed the secret door on the other side. Mm. Uh, there's an activation. You, it looks like if you press the center eye. Yeah. So he does a bunch of that, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you press it. <laughs> the door opens um, to what looks like a little storage area. Um, you can see a door on the far side. Um, this is just a storage area. It looks like um, m there's these things called uh, man catchers, which are like a long pole with like a thing mm -hmm. on the other side, to, like grab someone's yeah. someone's neck. Um, lots of instruments of like medicine or more accurate torture. Um, there's some old arcane equipment. Mm -hmm. um, looks like jars that are sealed, watertight, full of like. Uh, just casting regents mm -hmm. uh, and there's a diagram on one of the walls of um, of a lungs to gill surgery oh. like surgery for removing someone's lungs and putting yeah. gills there Ugh. like looks at those and he's like okay and he um, kind of like grabs a jar of stuff and puts it in a pocket mm. It's a jar of fish heads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, at this time, Kabukane is going to take a bot. Uh, he has a series of bottles, kind of on his on his belt, of clean water, of mm -hmm. wonderfully clean, pristine mm -hmm. uh -huh. water, uh -huh. and he's going to open it up and like kind of trail it through the uh, through the area and, and say a prayer okay. to, try, to try and. You know, hopefully cleanse the area. Okay, um, so you you let it out, and you can see some of the some of the the bad algae shrivel back, but it's not the the source isn't in here, so it's not going to be enough to disperse it. But it is that a spell or just like a prayer? It's just a prayer. Oh, okay. I was just curious. No, no. no. Um, is there? Uh, Christine just kind of looks through the room. It's kind of creepy and gross, and. Um, she's not really looking for anything in particular, so I guess a passive perception around the room. Um, yeah, uh, nothing, nothing of note uh, other than that I've described. Okay. Mm. Great. Then she's gonna wait for the light source to continue moving. Great. The light source. Uh, AKA it's AKA been, it's yeah. maybe been about five, six minutes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, we can't. None of us can talk. This yeah, is is that? Is no, you just can breathe. You can talk if you can water breathe. Can you? Oh, I don't know. I just no. assumed we couldn't. Yeah. I think you can. Oh, it all depends. If you guys want to not, <laughs> whatever oh. you, whatever you guys want. I mean, I, maybe we don't. It's kind of fun with you guys not being able to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. It's it's also, fun like, this way. Even if it, even if it is like you can talk while water breathing, it's kind of fun to not because it's like the water so gross and disgusting that. Oh yeah, no, it, it has this like, it has this great tone. So yeah. uh, well, let's so, let's yeah, keep let's going. Keep, let's anyway, keep going. so is is there a is this room a dead end or was there? No, a, there is a door. Oh, okay, I said I'm gonna side. move towards the. Yeah. The door across the way. And it's try a it. simple wooden door, uh, but it is locked. Uh, 
<laughs> I, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna like what point is, at the door what is and be like. Under, um, um, it is sleight of hand, I believe. Crap. Okay, I'm gonna try. Um, it's just a dexterity check. Oh, that's oh, right. That's right. It's the thieves' have, tools. If you have thieves' tools, see. you can add your. Yeah, I have thieves' tools, and I'm proficient with them. Great. So I'm gonna try. That's such a better way to do it. I'm gonna try to unlock the door. Wait, what was my? Yeah, this bird pulls out his his set of thieves tools, jams a few things into the into the lock, twists it. Watching the door opens. Those with talons is probably pretty interesting. I can't. He's like using his It's like it's like when ravens or crows use tools. Yeah, that's how I imagine it is. Yeah. Break open a You so yeah, you crack open the door and it leads to like a small chapel. Um, it again, it looks like um, you see this symbol again. This is the symbol that they're worshiping. Uh, you can see that there is a small offering table with some fresh fish guts and um, and like blood and entrails that have sort of been like left there, kind of floating up out of a small dish. Um, it looks like a, a little offering place to whatever this god is. Uh, there is a door behind you guys as well. Mm. All right, I'm gonna kind of go and approach the fish guts and go. <laughs> <laughs> As you like uh, swim away from it, the water that you push disturbs some of the stuff, and it like kicks it up into the air and sort of like <laughs> spreads it out a little further. Uh, all the, the swimming away from it pushes it tightly into a corner. <laughs> uh, now I'm gonna swim over to the other door and like try it again. Um, the other door is also locked. <laughs> Look expectantly at Ka this time. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine it's all like a flying yeah. motion, like every time. <laughs> I, I, I fly swim over there and pull out my thieves' tools and my beak. <laughs> and. 14. Um, yes, you are uh, again able to, with some twists and turns, break the thing open. This one opens, uh, and you can see on the far side, it has several uh, jail cells. All you can see are like the bars. This looks like a prison area with then a long tunnel on the other side. Are there anything oh. in the cells? Yeah. Funny you should ask, as you guys kind of swim through it, because you can only look about 10 feet. Uh, you can see like the, 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 they're cloudy with blood. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see several dead experiments floating in their cells that are like people that have been kidnapped that look like there's some kind of horrible like version of that surgery to turn their, surgery. yeah, God. some mm -hmm. kind of horrible gill, lung to gill conversion surgery. Eek. Just gonna, yeah, I'm going to keep moving down the hallway. Honestly, after the first couple cells, probably trying not to look to the yeah. left and right anymore. Are they just like, just, like, hang, like floating there? Just, just Back and forth yeah, kind of. oh, I'm still looking at each cell as we pass. Yeah. Just to Same. Yeah, I'm like, yeah you. It, it, there's maybe like two or three people like hanging there, just sort of floating. I'm gonna say a prayer for each one of these fallen souls. <laughs> and we have a series of, of hands gestures to do underwater prayers. <laughs> of course. Do you? Cool. Um, um, all right, you guys continue down the long hallway. It goes on for a very long time. Is it um, all gel cells? No, 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 no. Okay. The gel cells, after there's only eight cells, and then okay. it just goes into a hallway. Mm -hmm. Maybe about ten feet wide. Uh, the, each room is, like, completely underwater, right? Like, water levels haven't changed at all? No. Okay. All of this is completely underwater. Um, you guys come around to a... Uh, you come around to a corner, uh, and you see um, a... Um, as you come around the corner, um, you can see several, um, they look like little fish people. Um, okay. they're small, they have, uh, they have big bulgy eyes on the side of their head. Um, there's five of them total. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm. uh, they kind of like, like, I, <laughs> <laughs> as they <laughs> uh, as they talk in their fish fish language. Um, sorry, I gotta find them. I should have marked this page. I've already aggroed them. Yeah, because you don't see them until they're like ten feet in right. front of you. Just um, here they are. Also, I don't know if they're Kotoa. 
Um, everyone roll some initiatives! Oh wait, I already got him. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh god. I did not expect to go underwater today. <laughs> <laughs> Are they all fire spells? Electricity. Lightning spells. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Alright! Electricity. Alright, light source, get in the back. <laughs> Alright. Other things. Ka, you're up first on this one. Um, oh, I, I'll describe. Uh, I'll describe them. There's four. Uh, there's four like regular um, of, of these little guys, and one of them that looks to be like maybe a little bit of a bigger deal. He has a. Uh, he has one of those man catchers that you saw mm. for, um, for oh. clampy clamping. Right. Sorry, I I pictured him as an anglerfish with like the little anglerfish. That's not inaccurate. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pretty close. Okay. Yeah. Oh wait, there's like a special one. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's, there's, a, one. there's one special one like awesome. this. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Man. And then there's a couple more like little ones. Uh, what's the is the big one in the back? Uh, yeah, he's kind of in the back, and he goes like <laughs> okay. to tell you guys to just. Wait, what was that? What do you say? What do you say? Just <laughs> <laughs> do the noise again. Yeah, do the noise again. Uh, all right, uh, Ka, you're up first. Great. Okay, so uh, once we turn the corner and see this, I kind of like grab onto the like the closest wall and like push myself off it towards the closest one. Great. And as I'm like floating through, I pull out my long sword and short my dagger. Sword. Or sh- short sword. Short sword. <laughs> pull out my short sword and my dagger. Um, and since this guy hasn't t- taken a turn yet, I'm gonna get advantage on him. And you do have advantage. Uh, nor- so everyone on melee attacks has disadvantage unless the weapon is a dagger, javelin, short sword, spear, or trident. Damn it. Ah. Uh-huh. All right, here we go. Um, so, but you, since you have a short sword and a dagger, you don't have disadvantage, and since you're acting before them, you have advantage. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna swing and stab with both of those. So that is a 25 for the short sword. Oh yeah. Oh. 24 for the dagger. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh God, you're gonna shred this And because it's advantage, it's a sneak attack. Oh god! <laughs> gonna assassinate. I missed two. Rose. And because of assassin, um, any hit on surprise. Mm. Or we're not surprise, huh? Yeah, we're not on surprise. Yeah. So this is just. So get three sneak attack and. Good uh, money. Okay. So that's. Ten, four, let's see, fourteen, nineteen. Tell me how he goes down. Oh. <laughs> All right, so as I'm swinging forward, I'm drawing my weapon, and first thing that goes in is a dagger into its neck, and then I just fall <laughs> through with the short sword. And his his fish head pops off, and. Uh, <laughs> And like it, this is kind of susp- it doesn't fall to the floor like it normally does. So it's almost like more grotesque than you're used to because it kind of like floats in the mm. you know floats in the water. Um, and then is and then after I dispatch him, I'm gonna use my cunning action uh, to dash. Oh, you kind of maneuver. Great. So then the you spot, right? as a bonus <laughs> action withdraw. And I push back. Up. <laughs> yeah, you kick off his body. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh god! So you stab him in the side. And you cut his head off, but the head's still attached. It doesn't come unattached yeah. until you push yeah. off yeah, his push body. Off. Yeah. And his head is still there, but his body goes away. Uh, who was in the front? You're obviously in the Me. back now. I, was, I think I was in the front. Great. So um, these three guys are then going to. Um, the three remaining are gonna go, like, oh, <laughs> and they uh, they're speaking. Uh, anyone speak under common? Nope. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, no. They're gonna like charge at you. They uh, have spears. They're here underwater, mm. um, and all three of them are gonna try to attack you, Val. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh. Okay. Um, Ten. No. Twelve. No. The twenty hits though. <laughs> Nat 20? Natural 20. Okay, yeah, that's gonna hit. <laughs> uh, it'd be 23 total. Um, so he, one of, two of them, uh, tell me how you take out two of their spears, first of all. <laughs> so they're all rushing me with spears? Yeah. I think Vel sees this, and Vel is really not used to being underwater, 
So he just starts kind of flailing. <laughs> and I think he accidentally catches one of their spears on the staff. Because the staff actually gives me plus one AC, and that's how I was able to dodge the 12. Oh. <laughs> so. And then uh, I think just his flailing sort of like he like manages to noodle his way around the other one. <laughs> as he flails awkwardly. Um, uh, it only deals you uh, six damage. <laughs> only. Good. Yeah, as uh, it, one of them, one of them is uh, as you're just kind of flailing. You deflect two of them, but one of them kind of catches you, uh, catches you in the side, mm. <laughs> but uh, is stopped. It, it doesn't go through your ribs mm-hmm. or anything. Uh, and they they pull back and they ah, hiss at you. And the orc blood in the water is joined by elf blood. <laughs> Capucana. Capucana is going to see us have it and go, and he's going to. You know, take out his conch shell, <laughs> say a small prayer, blow into the conch shell, the bu- bubble come, bubbles come out, and then he puts the, put us away, and then he transforms into a reef shark. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> so you have a swim speed, which means you don't have any disadvantage on anything yeah. underwater. So, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of turns out like, oh, oh god. <laughs> she, seeing Crest do this, like, Christine's like, um. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to like, swim, swim uh, into kind of the same area as within five feet of Bell. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so uh, you are in range then to attack. The, uh, uh, or do they have reach with that? They they do, actually. They have reach. Uh, no, their reach is five feet. Uh, oh, yeah, so reach five. Yeah, no, that reach five normal. feet. So, that's you, normal yeah, that's reach. normal. So you're, you're yeah. within to attack them. Yeah. If you like, I can't oh, attack because it, it takes it. an action to transform. Hmm. Beautiful. Right, the next turn. All right, Christine, you're up. Great. Um, Christine steps into the fray, kind yeah, of I thought putting, I rolled well on this putting one. herself <laughs> between no, uh, not this one. the the little fish people and Vel, because she knows Vel's squishy, hmm. um, and is going to attack him. You put kind of push Vel, Vel yeah. to the side as you step in front uh, of him. First attack's a natural one because I'm at disadvantage. Hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so you're not used to the way that your blade cuts through the water, or, uh, and um, you just kind of it, it like it comes out of your hand, and you like grab it real yeah. fast as you as you miss. Um, okay, so I'm gonna attack. Okay, it's uh, Christine side by side with a reef shark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a two. Uh, a, a, a two. Um, yes. Yeah, so you again like. This isn't working. It's like way too slow. Yeah, it's, it's way mm-hmm. d- yeah. not what you're used to. Okay. Um, okay. That's your actions? Yeah. Valerius. Ah! Um, so, is am I now behind Christine and the Reef Shark? Yes. Okay, she got... Okay. Cool. Um, and they are lined up. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. And it's not I'm, a big hallway. They're yeah, like, I'm going to kind of like... I think they pushed me. I'm going to kind of like rotate backwards a little bit. But I'm gonna, I finally... Get over my surprise, and I'm, and I st- stab the staff into the ground as I, as I rotate around, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cast erupt earth, kind of uh, behind them, so that I'm catching the majority of the room while hopefully sparing yep. my friends. Um, and yeah, so they're all going to give me a deck save. You do so. Oh, okay. Um, here we go. Um, Fourteen is the highest. Uh, that all they all fail. Okay, uh, I have one more for oh. you, the special one. Oh no, he fails too. Okay, so they're gonna take uh, eight. Uh, they're gonna take thirteen damage. Okay. And uh, then, yeah, there's kind of a <laughs> as just like a chunk of the floor, or no, a chunk of one of the walls next to them just. <laughs> Kind of explodes outward and throws stones the and shrapnel of rocks. You can see it breaks arms, breaks legs, knocks the wind mm-hmm. out of them. Uh, the um, the special one, he looks okay. Uh, it was thirteen damage. Yeah. Uh, he looks okay, but the others they don't uh, they don't look too hot. Um, they look like they might fall over at any second. It's like they <laughs> and uh, it's a little different because we're in water, but the area would then be uh, difficult terrain. Okay. Because there's rocks uh, thrown. Yeah, everywhere there's there's, there's, there's so rocks and there's there's wall and there's yeah. there's dirt and yeah, it's yeah, so still it's, probably difficult terrain. Yeah, it's terrain. probably you know obscured or whatever. But yep, that's it. Um, the special one whose name is Plip Loopadoop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
I've been reading through the friend, uh, the uh, no, not the, the out of the abyss, and they have Koatoa in there, and that's their naming convention for them, and I love it. Okay, um, this guy, he is, um, he's gonna come over to. Uh, those aren't gonna help him here. Uh, okay, so he's going to. Uh, you see him now that he's been hit. You see him cast a quick. Uh, he he prays to his uh, his three eyed god and he casts a quick spell um, that you can see like the moss around him just like grabs onto his body to create a, a shield of his faith. Yeah. Um, and his, then his evil bastard faith. <laughs> you see, he's kind of given up on these guys, and so he's gonna swim all the way down to the end of the hallway. You can see that like this hallway. Since it turned, you can see him like go and he disappears in the darkness ahead. Um, Ka. Great. Uh, I'm gonna, with my short sword and dagger still drawn, I'm gonna push it off the wall again and ah. move to the closest one. Okay. Engaged with everyone, I guess. Right? Yeah, with the reef shark and Christine. Um, yeah. Because they're within range, it is still a sneak attack. Yeah, I swing. Net 20. Oh! Damn. Cause wrecking it right <laughs> All right. Um, he's at three hit points, so oh. tell me what it looks like as he goes down. Damn. 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 I push forward off the wall again. Uh, this time I just, like, push forward with my sword straight. I go, like, right into him and then dagger into the top of his skull. And then cutting it again, I push off his body back to the wall. <laughs> God, I've missed rogues. Um, <laughs> so cool. <laughs> lovely. Um, uh, two of those guys are alive. You see they get up, uh, and they're going to kind of like, they, they swim They swim 30 feet uh, thirty feet down down the hall. They're, they're taking withdraw actions to just move 30, uh, disengage actions, excuse me, to move move 30 feet away. They're trying to run from you guys. Um, they're not not happy. They, there's two left, and they both kind of go like, <laughs> <laughs> They're like <laughs> trying to escape. Um, Poak, uh, Kapukena. I, I want to. I, Poaku is your other name. Poaku. Yes. Kapukena Poaku. Uh, first, I need to mend some things. When I transformed, <laughs> I want the bubbles to come out of the shell to envelop me and turn me into the shark. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I just got to make sure. Uh, and then now I'm just going to bite, bite the guy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, so because I pack tactics, I get advantage on this roll. Oh, because you you got friends. I'm, yeah, I got friends. Hmm. Wait, you're swimming towards the ones that they're like trying to get away. Oh no, then you don't have pack tactics. So you have to be within five feet. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but they've they've, they've, they've gone thirty feet down. They use their action to run away from us. They're that. Oh, they're that far away. I thought they yeah. Were so just just a re-roll. It just regular. Oh, uh, that's twenty unnaturally. Ah, oh, that hits. Eight. Got it. I got it. Uh, nice. ten damage. Uh, yeah. You uh, tell me, tell me. I, I swim really fast and I just clamp down on his neck or his neck head region <laughs> and just take a big old chunk out of him. The uh, the other one, he's dropped his spear at this point. He's like. <laughs> Uh, Christine. Um, I don't... I let them go. Okay. Uh, Bell? Yeah, um... Rather than let that one get away, I'm gonna be like... I'm gonna hold my side that got hurt, and I'm gonna point at his dropped spear, and I'm gonna catapult it at him. Oh, okay. <laughs> Deck save. Uh, oh, 17? The spear misses him and shatters on a wall as it... It shoots through the water like a torpedo and just snaps when it hits a wall. There you go. <laughs> uh, the big guy who who remains, um, if I'm not mistaken, right? He hasn't moved from you guys. Um, I don't think so. I thought I thought that he. Oh, you thought said he, he took off. Oh, he did. He did take off. Yeah. Great, great, great. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if I said that or not. Yeah, um, he did. He took off even before. So then we are back at the top with Ka. Okay, uh, I'm going to. They're going to be too it far is, for you to move and attack. It is a. It is still difficult terrain in a right. twenty foot cube in the area I blasted them in. So okay, so they might be, they for, might only them, be like, but for us too. Yeah. So so I, I couldn't like move and then use my free dash to get to them probably. 
Um, no, you could if you did all that, you could get up to him. Okay, you I'm, just wouldn't be able to retreat. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push forward off the wall again, and then one of the rocks that's like sort of floating through the water, I'm gonna <laughs> grab onto that and push off again and shoot forward. Um, uh, yeah, and this time, kind of coming at him. Like this. Great, roll it. Oh, that was fun. Um, no. Thirteen. Hit. Tell me how he goes down. Yeah. <laughs> I come at him and I just kind of stop in front of him and <laughs> I just barely have enough momentum to get right to him. And he's. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he he floats lifelessly. I suspend combat. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see that the other guy um, has, has continued to swim down the hallway. Um, and he's gotten into, uh, well, you can't quite see that far. Mm-hmm. But he's further down. I guess follow him? Yeah. I guess we follow going. him. Uh, lovely. You follow him. There's some side passages, but are you going to take those? Um, I'm staying a little further back and just providing light now, so I'll follow who's ahead of me. Mm. Can I just look into each of them? Are they just hallways? They're, they're hallways. They go further down. Um... Do, do we have any direct idea of where where big guy went? No, we don't. Uh, went, no, you do. He he went down. He did not go down the. Well, I guess it didn't look we, like he went down the side passage. Okay. We wouldn't see it because it's murky water. We only see oh, ten feet. That's true. Okay. But I'll. He wasn't looking like he was headed in that direction. Okay. Um. Maybe he's like leaving a trail of. He probably is leaving a like trail of fish blood. You got smacked with a rock or something. So yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna circle kind of around Christine, kind of waiting to see what, what direction she goes. Okay. Um, well, we can't, we can't talk to each other. <laughs> no, you can make actions though. Um, Christine is gonna check the first hallway she comes to. Um, okay. Uh, so you you turn right, um, and then it looks like there's some branching. One goes one goes straight. There's another branch that way. So it's just like more tunnels. I was gonna kind of turn mm-hmm. and be like, <laughs> um, as she starts to turn that out, it's just like yeah. more inquisitive than like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Just like, okay. Um, and I can't see anything coming out of the, either, either of these tunnels. Okay. Do they look like they go up? No. Or, okay. No. Continue to go deep. Um. Down, down to Goblin Town. Then I guess she's gonna follow. Well, I mean, she's letting him go. So, point of order. Yes. I have blind sight as a shark. Uh, can I see down the down the tunnels anymore than, um, than what we can already see? You don't you don't detect any any creatures down there. That's sort of what your blind sight would let you see. As a shark. As <laughs> a shark. As <laughs> a shark. Um, okay, then I guess um, you know Christine's gonna explore a little bit. Um, she's letting that guy go. Um, oh. So she wants to keep exploring and see if maybe... um Okay, great. Uh, So you continue further in, um, and this passageway, um, it goes up and the door turns to the right. Okay. Um, You see that there is a... um, There's some undercommon script that is written on a sign that's held up above. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. Jamie was here, so he could uh, know the language. Um, I study the script so that I may write it down later. Okay. Um, lovely. So what happens um, is everyone give me a constitution save. Oh. Um, 20. All right, Vel. Oh, Vel passes. Four. Five. Fail. Six, fail. Seven, fail. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, big so money. This is what I get for exploring. Mm. I like this better than just... Uh, follow, for, follow, for, the fish for, man. follow the fishman. I like this better than follow the fishman. He'll be back with reinforcements. It's fine. That's fine. Okay. Hope we don't die. Is this for like an like, arrow trap or something? What is this? I don't know. It sounds like he's rolling a lot of dice over <laughs> yeah. there. It does. Yeah. It's 40, 40 necrotic damage. Good. Okay. As uh, you guys are sort of forced down to your knees as the like oppressive energy 
okay. sort of forces you to. <clears throat> Do I take half for saving? Uh, none for save. None for save. Oh. But you're still sort of forced down to the ground. So, so this necrotic damage is too overwhelming. Draws down my shark, and I have to morph out of the shark. Bubbles come up from underneath the shark, and you see Puaku as as he was. Okay. Um, so we're all we, driven down. Is to this our just knees. from the script? Yeah, do we know what caused it? Um, no. It's some kind of arcane energy built into the built into the thing. Into the walls? Mm-hmm. Yeah, built into the walls. Away. It's a trap. Okay. But you can see that beyond that, um, it leads to a big open room. Okay. Um, I guess we keep going. Are we able to really like move now? now that after yeah, I think yeah. After, after, right. after, as the trap sides. hits, I think the the moon on my staff kind of just glows a little bit more, and as everybody else seems to be in pain, it goes like. Right. Swing forward. At this point, I'm using my staff as kind of like a, a a way to drag my yeah, <laughs> propel myself rather than drag. Yeah, I'm no longer flying through the water. <laughs> sort of like. Um, as you guys um, continue on, it leads to a very large open room um, in which you see uh, he's floating around. I'll show you guys his picture. Oh. What, oh. That guy? Yeah, scary mouth, lots of tentacles. You can see he has three eyes Ooh. and four oh. tentacles. Oh, um, <laughs> and you can see him, uh, see him floating around. Bubbles are coming up. Uh, but no, no bubbles are coming up out of his mouth. What am I saying? Um, and you see him kind of stare at you as as he enters, and you feel him talk to you. Uh, those of you who've spoken to Jamie recognize it as telepathic, mm-hmm. and he says, um, uh, he sen- essentially says, like, "What brings you down here to my domain?" Can we can you get back to him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys can you guys can talk to him. I start flailing very angry hand motions at him. Uh, you can talk to him Vel, through your brains. Yeah. Right. Vel goes to talk to him and like does the bubble thing, and then for thanks for saying he's like, oh, I don't know, gill surgery, crazy paladin army up a, up top, a evil story. You know, pick your favorite. Evil story. Why are you ruining the waters? He, this, this watches is no good. Posai is not happy about the watches. He says, Posai, who is that? Posai is, is the one on high about the watches. She, she is the, the water uh, you would, uh, common people call goddess. Oh. Hmm. He like, uh, like sways side to side. He says, I laugh in the face of gods and goddesses. I was born before. Yeah, he like he like looks at the moon. Said she says, "I was born before the gods and gods came to this plane, and I will be here long after as its master." Why are you here? Why ruin the waters? You live in the waters. You want the waters to be clean. Hmm. No, I think you want the waters to be dirty. Uh, give me a <laughs> wisdom Screw. save. Screw you. <laughs> Screw you and your bucket full Steven. Nine? Ooh! You get proficiency on wisdoms, don't you? That's a dream. Oh, saving tools, yes. So uh, that's going to be, actually, it's going to be a... Twelve. Twelve. Ah, still no. Um, you are magically charmed by me. Until I die, or I'm on a different plane of existence. Holy shit! Seriously? Yeah. So that means that I can't attack you then. You're under my control and can't take reactions, um, and the Abolith and the target can communicate telepathically with each other over any distance. Okay. So you're on my team. Okay. He he looks at you, and he says, "Yes, there. That's better." And then he looks at uh, he looks at Bell with his staff and his robes. He goes, "Hmm. You look educated." I'm going to enjoy eating you. And then he reaches into your brain, and he's going to try to enslave you as well. Oh, wow. It's two, huh? Wisdom save? Wisdom save! That's not good. Uh, mm, mm. I 
I swear, Ten. TPKS right here, and he's yeah, so six. mad at you. Starting to not trust you. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Ten? Ooh, you're on my team, too. Cool. <laughs> All right. I'm I got you. attack him. I'm going to enjoy being eaten. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're going to attack him? Yeah. Great. Uh, with what? With my weapons? No, I mean, which one? I'm, my you're, sword? It sounds like, okay, great. <laughs> May, uh, no, I. <laughs> what other? Fun? What I don't are you know. looking for I'm, here? I'm, your sword, your javelin, your oh, javelin. Sorry, uh, you're no, like javelin. I'm gonna attack him with I, my weapon. I'm like, <laughs> give me something. I, I forgot a little, she had other. A little right, descriptive, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, please. Uh, I don't have since the javelin. I don't have to take. Nope, no disadvantage. Oh yeah, you're throwing it. Yep. Um. Cocoon! Shockwave. 25 to hit. Uh, yeah, 25 hits. Um, that is seven damage. Woo! Lovely. Okay. Um, Christine jumped the jumped the gun. Pawaku, you're up first. Oh God! Um, Kill these intruders! <laughs> They are ruining the waters. You cannot have these these foul beans ruining the waters. Well, our two spellcasters, two people who would uh, mm. fix um, this problem. I am going to cast Shalele and pull out my my quarter staff that turns into a bigger quarter staff. And okay. then I want to come and I want to hmm. try and hit uh, Christine on the head. Okay. Uh, disadvantage because you're underwater. Yeah. Oh, both orbs. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, uh, Christine just like puts an uh, puts an arm up, bong, and the shillelagh hits the shield. Um, Val. Okay. Um, Val just saw his Birdman friend be very effective in the last room, and I assume he still has his full mental facilities, even though he's changed sides, right? <laughs> um, pl- however you want. You you know no 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 the abolith has control. Oh, okay. So I'm so not, you have I'm to not. kind of think how the abolith would. Hmm. How the abolith would fail. <laughs> I don't freaking know how. Okay. Um. <laughs> Come on, can't just think how an abolith would. Uh, yeah. Would think. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, uh, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. I I'm going to. I'll just do what I was going to do. Um, I'm going to reach and I'm going to stick my hand into my pocket and, and pull out like kind of this slimy muck that used to be dust that was in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm going to just thrust my hand out and, and chant it. Uh, oh, that's interesting. My silence. Can I incant still? <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, we'll just go because we've been playing it this way. Uh, Pat, give me a strength save as a hand bursts out of the wall and tries to grapple you. Alright. Uh, 14. 14 fails. Yes, barely. Um, okay, so you take 2d6 bludgeoning damage. Uh, come on, nine, da- 9 bludgeoning damage and you are grappled as this hand comes out of the wall and grabs you. Super, as a as a <laughs> Looking pretty worse for wear. Ka, you're up. Um, I'm gonna try to break free the grapple. Yep. So it costs an action. Um, make a strength save. Sixteen. Uh, you pass. So you have managed to force your way out of the hand. All right. So I as my fingers, my physical fingers are pushed uh, apart. As the hand minutes. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess I'm like right next to these guys, right? Yeah. We're all really close together. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, I have to. If I <laughs> if I want to do anything, I have to disengage. Or uh, risk Vel's devastating reaction attack. <laughs> 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 uh, any reaction attack would probably down me. So, <laughs> so Vel's devastating like poke would <laughs> probably kill me. Mm. Um, all right, yeah, I'm going to try to disengage to get away from these two guys. Okay. Um, you do so. You don't have to do anything oh, yeah. for that. So, yeah, for disengaging. I, and that's, I, Is that a bonus action? That's both my actions. Okay. 
Uh, well, I guess I could. You can cunning action to disengage too, right? Right, but that would be oh. his bonus. Oh, yeah, so you still oh. have a move. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to disengage and maybe move in. See if, like, yeah, try you to move out of view of them ish. and hide. Since um, we're in murky water? Is it possible? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. You okay. can hide. Alright, then I'm going to hide. Perfect, give me a hide check. Sixteen. Great, Christine. Great. Um, I'm going to use um a non, I guess non-lethal. I'm gonna use my shield to kind of like bash. Um, Maybe shove. Um, what's his face? The Avalon. Brian, no, oh. Brian. What's your name? Oh. Um, Kabukana. 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 Um, I'm gonna use my shield Kapukana. to kind of like bash him on the okay. the head. I guess. Oh. Uh. So, Thirteen. Thirteen. Ooh. Thirteen misses. Thirteen misses. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna um, chuck another javelin at him. I have normal javelins as well. At who? Uh, the abolith. Okay. Um, so that is a twenty-three hit. To hit. Uh, dealing another seven damage. Uh, and I'm gonna use a bonus action uh, to. Uh, get my second wind. Okay. Um, so it's seven, twelve HP healed. Okay. All right. Um, with the uh, with the abolith seemingly having you guys in its uh, having you guys right where it wants you, um, we're actually going to have to have to call it here for today. <sighs> Ooh. Um, so let's, uh, questions, comments, and concerns. Fuck Abolus, man. Yeah, that's that stupid is, mind control. Wow. I hate mind shit. control. That trap was brutal. That was yeah. a real trap. That was yes. also really, like, That was like... <laughs> yeah. Like two oh. levels lower than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so true, that, too. That, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Almost wiped you just yeah. by yourself. Yeah. So. That plus it, the whole... 40 damage, yeah. I would be at two hit points if it had hit me. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Oof. It's, dungeons are strange because you give us these awesome leads, right? Like the guy running away. Like, we, like my instinct is to go follow him. But at the same time, another instinct of mine is to explore as much of the dungeon as possible. Yeah. Right. So dungeons are always weird because I'm not exactly yeah. what the best course of action is in a dungeon. That's go kind of character. a little a little bit of the meta is creeping in. I think go sometimes where it's like, wait, we have to explore all the rooms before we yeah. get to the end. And yeah. So. Well, we can always I, go after we've killed the big terrible thing at the end of the dungeon. We can always go back and loot stuff. Yeah. Well, my my philosophy was like, okay, well, as Chris is like, okay, well, he's leaving. Why would I chase him? Yeah. So I was like, let's yeah. keep going. Like this yeah. is the first. Corridor. Especially because you have no plans to cut him down. Right. Well, particularly mm-hmm. like we were in a you know an exploratory sort of mode, trying to figure out what's going on. So like, and that's, that's kind of also it's yeah. like you know sure. I'll leave him be and like. You know, yeah, and that's what I like. I defer it to you. Just yeah. yeah. So I just rearrange the dungeon. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. That works. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Um, so, yeah, I I don't like the uh, disadvantage underwater. Not because it's like it feels unfair. It doesn't. It's just kind of like like uh, I know what I I need to do. It's not so much like what Christine wants to do. It's what she uh, needs to do, and she like physically cannot yeah. do what she needs yeah. to do. Right? Yeah. It's a. Like it's you've taken everything away from her while by putting her underwater. Except javelins. Except, except javelins. Except for my four good, javelins. I have. You can use them in melee too. Yeah, you don't have to throw them. You can always just like stab people with them and stuff. Okay. Yeah. If you don't, yeah, it's good would to be remember. A, yeah. Um, um, I, have to, I have to preface that I made this character not knowing we are going to go underwater today. I know. That's why so, I was pushing you in that direction. So Prepared my like, spells that way, too. So like, I don't going want to, underwater? No. Oh, not knowing. I yeah. don't want to don't, not think that I made this character just for, yeah. this, for this dungeon yeah. or whatever. By the way, levitate, not useful underwater. Chopping <laughs> 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 grass, not useful underwater. Oh, well, yeah. Lightning, like, not useful yeah, underwater. Yeah, lightning, it, yeah, unless I want to murder everyone. <laughs> Uh, that would be not a good idea. Though. I thought it was like roleplay wise, the underwater part was fun. Oh yeah, no, it was so great. Because we're trying fun. to be like. I like that we decided to not be able to talk. Yeah, easily. not talking is kind of fun. Um, yeah. I actually remember seeing a debate about this on a forum one time about like if we're underwater, can spellcasters still use the verbal component of their spells, or does it silence them? And it's like, 
Uh, well, I mean, yeah, you can always, you can get an argument for both. Yeah, yeah. I like there were strong arguments on those You can still sets. speak underwater, well, whether or not that is, like, yeah. audible and, like, can... Yeah, like, it's, it depends on how you decide magic works. In my head, it's like, you say the word, You even if you're mouthing the words and, like, the important part of a verbal component is the concept that it helps right. you frame in your mind by right. saying these old formulae and stuff. So as long as you're in so your brain, you're thinking you're saying, then it'll, the I, effect will still happen. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my it. thought. But it also like then, but then you still have to be able to make noise. Like silencing still stops you from doing that. So there's, it's tough, and yeah. then we just kind of went with it. So I decided to keep going with it. But, yeah, I like it. And, uh, I'm I'm always for what is the path of least resistance yeah, and, that gives us the coolest effect. Yeah, I didn't think of that until I didn't want my spells to work anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. Also thinking like how an abolith would want me to act is difficult. <laughs> oh, man, it's that's also so scary. interesting because, I mean, you have lightning spells, right? So if he doesn't care about, like, his little, like, puppets, why wouldn't the puppets, like, use, like, chain I, lightning and affect themselves as well? I him? almost started to do that, but then I was like, well, the Abolith probably doesn't want it, want me to hurt it. Oh, that's um, also a factor. It could be true. Well, um, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to figure this out. Uh, next time on Threshold. Right. Thanks everyone for uh, thanks for watching and for uh, playing. Please uh, check out our Patreon. Um, it's it's wonderful. Go ahead and follow us on the Twitter and on um, we're not on the Facebook, but no. follow us on the Twitter and go ahead and check us out on our wiki, uh, which is great. I'll uh, be adding all kinds of fun things uh, around the Fane Coast, including the stuff that we have here today. Um, also, be sure to check out our. Um, uh, we're gonna have a PDF which is available through our Patreon of sort of all the plot hooks here for this region and a little more description of the area. So if you, that's something you're interested in for your own campaigns, um, go ahead and check that out. If you want to run your own campaign, the World of Threshold, and be tied into our ever-expanding continuity, uh, shoot me shoot me a message on Twitter or uh, through our T6 Mafia website. I am pretty good about answering those as uh, <laughs> as good as I can be. Um, Thanks for thanks for watching. Uh, again, uh, a special thanks to all those um, who have supported us through Patreon, and we will um, have their names up here in just a minute for our credits. Um, thank you again, and uh, we will see you tomorrow for afterwards, and then again next Monday for Threshold. <laughs>